Hey, hello, this is Shodik Sarkar and in this video, <coughs> I'm going to teach you about sets in Python. But before uh, doing set operations and working and getting our hands dirty with sets in Python, we have to understand the mathematical theory behind it because sets are actually a crucial part of mathematics. Yeah. But I won't go into depths because you may not like it or you may get bored. So I won't cover all those nitty gritty details but do not worry I will give you all the things that you need to work with sets in Python. So I must say sets are one of the most interesting topics I have ever come across in my life in mathematics, the field of mathematics. So before starting today's class let's see what we are going to learn today because that's really important right. So first we are going to look at the types of set we have. So first we'll see what are sets, why it is used. Then we'll see subsets, then you know supersets, um, then power sets, equivalent sets, then equal sets. And then we will jump on to set operations. That means what we can do with sets. We can do a union operation, intersection, disjoint, set difference, symmetric difference, and complement of a set. Now I know this might sound like you know alien terms to you, but do not worry, I will teach each and every topic in great detail. Now we will cover all of these topics twice. Why twice? Because the first time I cover these, I will actually talk with you. I will talk with you, I will um, show you, I, I will demonstrate you through various drawings using Microsoft Paint, and then we will cover all of these using Python. So first step is theory. I will I will make sure that you understand each and everything very properly. I will show you uh, drawings. I will give you you know examples, different different examples. And then finally, once we cover all these 12 topics, then we will jump on to the Python portion of it. Okay. So let's begin. Now uh, let's begin by saying what are what are sets. Now what is a set in simple terms? So math um, a mathematician defines a set by these sentences. A set is a collection or class of well-defined objects. Okay. Now what are objects? Objects are just things like, you know, real life things, me, you, uh, numbers, digits, um, alphabets, all those stuff. And collection, you know collection? Uh, collection are just like lists, tuples. Now, let me give you a simpler explanation of sets. What are sets? Now let's understand sets from a perspective of a Python programmer or as a programmer as a whole. So what are sets? Sets are collections. Now what are collections? Collections are things like lists, tuples, where you actually keep multiple values. You keep multiple values in, this, in a single container. Now that is called a collection, right? So you have, you have done lists, you have done tuples, all those are collections. Now what was list? List was simply a container where you can put things, you can remove things, you can change things, you can do whatever you wanted to, right? So basically lists was, you know, lists, lists were, um, what to say, mutable because you can change the contents, right? You can change the contents of a list. Now coming to tuples, tuples were not mutable because you cannot change or you cannot modify tuples elements. You can add it, you can, you can do some things, but you cannot actually change things already inside it, right? But when we look at a set, a set is a mutable. A set is a mutable collection which contains immutable objects. So uh, you cannot put, you know, you, 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 you cannot put list inside, um, you know, you cannot put list inside set. So set can only contain things which cannot be modified. For example, numbers. For example, um, your name, my name, strings. 
for example you know tuples all those stuff but it cannot contain things like dictionaries and uh, lists because these are mutable right you can change them you can modify them and that's why you cannot keep them in sets so sets itself are in are you know mutable but it keeps immutable objects inside it so you can modify um you can you can modify the set itself by removing or adding elements or editing things but you cannot modify the things inside a set so again what is a set set is a collection of well defined objects objects are basically you know things in python everything you have you have came across till now um it can be variables it can be you know it can be just integers it can be uh, float number it can be strings it can be boolean it can be um you know what can i say but remember you cannot change these things right you cannot modify them so you have to keep in mind that you cannot keep mutable things inside set so you cannot say that i can keep lists as well no you cannot yes you can but indirectly not directly so you cannot directly put list into set you have to convert list into a tuple then put the tuple into set you cannot go from list to set you have to use tuple as a intermediate part so you have to convert list to tuple from tuple convert to set you have to do this thing so now coming back to my point what are the specialties of set now set are actually collections which cannot contain duplicate values so that's the specialty of set you cannot keep duplicate values inside a set everything can appear only once only once now let me show you an example so that you can understand what sets actually are so let's open paint as usual can i do this i guess not oops not i okay well it's okay i hope you guys can hear my voice that will be okay so let's say okay, let's open the camera first yeah so let's say we we run a company we run an organization and the organization has various programmers so there are various programmers you may be a javascript programmer i may be a java programmer that guy may be a python developer and she may be a um, you know ruby developer and that guy over there may be a julia developer all sorts of programmers out there right so let me draw this let me draw this for you let's take this shape and this is our company right this is our company this is a building okay this is the building we have now inside the building we have people we have different people let let's denote people by this this is people one this is another person this is another person this is another person this is another person okay and then there are many other people out here so these are different programmers right so now let's say this guy knows python and then this guy knows java this guy knows ruby and he knows c he knows c++ these are different programming languages then this guy over here also knows java this guy knows how uh, well python this guy also knows python and then again this guy knows c++ and this guy knows java so now 
So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, 10. So we have 10 people in our company. And this guy knows Python, this guy knows Java, Ruby. Now let's count how many people or how many programmers are actually Python programmers. So let's take a brush. And let's count how many Python, how many Python developers are there. So this is one. Um, well, this is two. This is three. So there are three Python developers. Now, how many Java developers are there? So this is one Java developer. This is this is another Java developer, and this is another Java developer. How many Ruby developers are there? Only one. How many C developers are there? Only one. How many C++ developers are there? There are two, right? Now, if I ask you, how many programming languages are used, you know, are currently used in your company? How many programming languages in total are used in your company? Will you say 10 because there are 10 people? No, you won't because Ultimately, at the end of the day, people are using only Python, Java, Ruby, C, and C++, right? So there are only, only five languages you are using. But you can see that we have 10 people over here. So if someone asks you how many programming languages are used in your company, you will answer five. Because Python, you know, Python occurs three times. Three people knows Python, so you won't say Python, Python, Python. <laughs> Although that's a funny example, you, you won't say that, right? So you won't say, my company uses Python, 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 Java, Ruby, C, C++, C++, Java, Java. You won't say like that. You, you will say Python, Java, Ruby, C, C++. So as you can see, we are not taking the duplicate values. So what are the duplicate values here? Let's, let's take another color. So this is duplicate. This is also duplicate. This is a duplicate value. This is also a duplicate value. And this is also a duplicate value. So what are the original values over here? So the original values are these. These are the original values. And these and, and the red ones are duplicate values. So you won't take duplicate values. You won't take what you have already taken. Now keep this in your mind. You won't take a thing which you have already taken, right? Now if I say that, well, represent this in terms of set. So let's remove this. Yeah. Now you have to represent this in a set. So let me make this a little big for you. Let's make it 28 and I think this much is okay. Now I say let's uh, let's denote list well not this color I need I need this one black one yeah so list of programming languages used in company right list of programming languages used in company and we will denote this using um, p p for programming languages so we say p equal to we take curly braces right we take curly braces and we say python java c c++ ruby so that's what we say. We don't take the duplicate values, right? List of programming languages used in company. Now, so uh, let's say you have 10 employees in your office. Okay. So the 10 employees are, let's say, let's say a set of employees. So set of employees so the set of employees are let's say let's let denote employees by e and say 
the ten employees are um well let's say Rob, John, Frank, Amy, Shubhadeep, Sudip, um Dorle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, let's add Shimoi. I need some more. And let's say Alan. And let's say Justin. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? We have ten, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, so we have these many employees working with us. Let us give a space so that you can understand the names more clearly. Right. So we have these many employees in our organization. Now, let's take another example of sets. And you know, Taking examples will actually clarify all your doubts. So let's take a set of um, well, the words executive. So this is the word and let's make a set of each alphabet. So let the, let the alphabets be you know, denoted by A. So A is a set and inside the set we will put the alphabets or the elements of this string or this word. So what are the elements of a word and their alphabets, right? So now we, uh, the, the first alphabet is E. What is the next alphabet? X. The third alphabet is E. And since E is already present, just skip it and then move on to the next element. It is C. So C is not present, right C. The next element is u, u is also not present, so write u and then t, then i, then v, but then again not e because e is again already present. So this is a set. Set will always remove the duplicate items. Right. So let's take another another word. Let's say um um let me think about what okay well let's take programmer so programmer right so what are this you know uh, what is the set of alphabets used inside this word so a equals a is again a set and the elements are p r o g R A M but do not take M again because M is already here so don't take the next M E and again this is R so do not take R remember that now check if all the elements are unique so P is only present one time R is also one time R O G well, so we have made a mistake. Remove this. Now we have our set. So remember, no element should repeat. Now, let's take another example. Um, let's say we have a set of, well, uh, we have first. Okay, uh, not that example. Let's take a example of a number let's say one zero zero two zero one three zero four five six so what is the set here what is the set here if this is a number what are the digits of the number so if I say you that make a set of all the digits inside the number you will say one zero two three four five and six so you removed all three zeros and replaced it with only one zero. So this 
is the concept of set. And one of the practical concept was that I, I had shown you in the, in the first example. So there are um, 10 people in the, in the organization and um, each of them knows a programming language. Then you have to say the set of all programming languages used inside the company. So there were only five programming languages. So that was the set because nothing repeated, right? So this is the concept of set. Now we will move on to the concept of subset, right? Now what is a subset? Let me open the camera. Now what is a subset? Sub subset, you know, let's say there are two sets. So let's say the first set is, uh, well, let's, let's write it. That would be more clear. So let's say we have a set of first 20 natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 12 13, 14, 15, I'm sorry, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have a set of the first 20 natural numbers. Now, if I have another set, let's say B, and it has only the first five numbers, five national numbers, one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four, and five. Right? And we have another set, and let's call it C, and C has elements um, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and let's have another set. We have D. <coughs> D has elements 1, 90, 56, 11, 23, and 17. Well, 37. Now, you can clearly see B has all the elements which A has, right? But B does not have all the elements which A has. Can you see that? Because B has 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So A also has 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, right? But then again, A has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and after that it has 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 up to 20 but a has up to 5 so we can say that b is a part of a right but we cannot say a is a part of b because because you see a has many elements other than 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we can say b is a part of a and in mathematical term this is said b is a subset of a so we can say b is a subset of a right but A is not a subset of B, right? Now again, if we look at C, C has 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So that means 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 are, uh, are part of A, right? So we can say that C is a part of A. But can we say that A is a part of C? No, we can't say. Because A has many different elements other than the elements of C that is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That means this part. So excluding this part we have 18, 19, 20 and all the elements up to this, right? Up to this, right? So again C is a subset of A but A is not a subset of C. And then again we see that, um, uh, oops I'm sorry, so again we see that D has 1, 90, 56, 11, 23, and 57, right? So you might say that, well, D has 1 and A also has 1. D has 11, A also has 11, right? You might say this, but can we say D is a subset of A? No, we cannot because clearly D is not a part of A. D is not a part of A because it has different elements which are not present in A. Um, yeah. D has 90, 56, 23 and 57 which are not present inside this set. 
right? So that means we cannot say D is a subset of A because in order to be a subset of another set, each and every element inside the set must be present in that another set, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is present, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is present, but 90, 56, 23, 57 are not present. That's why D is not a subset. B is a subset of C and, and uh, I'm sorry, B is a subset of A and C is also a subset of A. And we can denote this by saying A subset, I'm sorry. Let's just remove this. So we can say B is a subset of A. But we cannot say that A is a subset of B. A is not a subset of B. So let's remove this. So inside in, in you know in mathematics we say B is a subset of A using this thing, this thing over here. So B is a subset of A and A is not a subset of B. So in case of C, C is also a subset of A but again A is not a subset of C. And in case of D, D is not a subset of A as well as A is also not a subset of D. So that is the concept. If one set, well, where's the pointer? Yeah. If one set contains all the elements <coughs> which is present in another set, it is the subset of that set. Right? That's the concept. Now the next concept is <coughs> it is superset. So the concept of subset is clear, I guess. Now let's move on to superset. So what is superset? Let's remove all these things. Let's remove all these. Yeah. So what is a superset? Superset is a set. You know. Okay. Uh, let's not give a definition because definition will be much difficult to understand. So let's give you an example, and that would be better. So here you can see that B is the subset of A because B has all the elements which is present in A. But can we say A is a subset of B? We cannot. Now here we say A is a superset of B because A has all the elements that B has as well as many other elements which B does not have. Right? So these are the things that B does not have but A has it. But these are the things which A has, which B also has, right? So this is the thing. So that means if this, you know, let's say there are two sets. Let's say, uh, let's say A and B. If B is a subset of A, that means A is a superset of B. And this is always the case, no matter what. If one set is, you know, if the, if the first set is the subset of the second set, then the second set will be the superset of the, of the first set, right? So that is the thing here also. Let me give you another example. C, C is the subset of A, but A is the superset of C. So that is the difference. C is the subset, A is the superset because C can be derived, C can be derived from these values. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Right? C has been derived from these values. But can I derive A? Can I derive A from C? No, like we can't. We can't. But we can determine C from A. That's why C is a subset of A and a is a superset of C. So that is a symbol. So this was the concept. I hope it is clear. I'm sorry.
let's keep that so super set is very simple i hope you got it if the first set is the super is the subset of second set then the second set is the super set of the first set so that is the concept here now let's move on to the next topic which is power set now if i say let's let's remove this example otherwise it will be very long trust me very long so now let's take another example let's say a is a set which has three natural numbers right it has three natural numbers so how many possible you know how many possibilities are there how many things can you derive from this well you can say that we have um one we have two we have three i'm sorry three we have um i can i can say one comma two i can say two comma three i can say three comma one right three comma one I can say one, two, three, and I can say five. So I can say none. Okay. <clears throat> Or in mathematics, none is called five. So and and I will show you what a five looks like. So these are the possibilities. I can you know these are just the possibilities. I can derived. i can derive from the given set so in the given set we have three elements 1 2 and 3 using these elements i can derive all the elements here so using these three elements i can derive 1 i can derive 2 i can derive 3 i can derive 1 2 i can derive 2 3 i can derive 1 3 or 3 1 I can derive one, two, three as well, which is already present, and I can derive five, and this is the symbol of five. This means none, none. So these are the subsets of the given set, right? So these are the subsets because. um you can clearly see every element every element can be derived from the given set right one comma you know one can be derived from 1 to 3 2 can be derived from 1 to 3 as well 3 can also be derived 1 comma 2 can be derived 2 comma 3 can be derived 3 comma 1 can be derived 1 comma 2 comma 3 can be derived none can be derived right and remember a set is always its own subset a set is always its own subset remember this thing and phi or none will always be a subset of every set no matter what you take subset you know one subset will always be none and this is also counted right this is also counted now you will say that <clears throat> if i say 2 comma 3 why didn't i say 3 comma 2 because in set order does not matter inside set the order in which you keep things does not matter so if you say 1 comma 2 and then you say 2 comma 1 it is the same thing right so you need to write it only once so 1 comma 2 that's it 3 comma 1 that's it no need to write 1 comma 3 because order does not matter in sets remember this so 3 comma 1 and 1 comma 3 are exactly same right so yeah uh, none will or none of phi this thing will always be a subset of any set you take and every set will be a subset of itself okay so how many sets do we have we have let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 8 why 8 so how can we determine how many subsets will are possible in sets 
so we can see that our original set has three elements this one this one and this one now we use the formula 2 to the power of n and what is n n is the number of elements in the given set so in this case the number of elements is 3 and I say 2 to the power of 3 and I get 8 right I get 8 now let's verify if there are 8 subsets so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and yes 8 so thus we prove with this formula so how many subsets are possible from a set we can directly derive it using 2 to the power of n where n is the number of elements present in the set right so that was the formula <clears throat> and uh, these all all of them are subsets of this set these are the subset of this set <clears throat> now if I take all of them if I take all of them and put it in another set that is called power set and it is denoted by P it is denoted by P why P you know it, 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 it is actually denoted by in this way so P parenthesis A P parenthesis of A equal equal this thing so let me write this in a better way <coughs> so p bracket a equal equal so that means power set of a is this thing so that means the set of all the subsets of a given set is called the power set i am repeating once again the set of all the subsets of a given set is called the power set of that set. That means <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3 and 5 are the subset of A. Now if I take this and put this in another set, now that is called the power set of A. And we denote this using P parenthesis A that means power set of set A so that was power set guys now the next thing is equivalent sets what are equivalent sets before understanding this let's understand what a cardinal number is what is the cardinal number let's keep this thing let's keep this thing yeah so what is the cardinal number so cardinal number is the number of elements present in a set cardinal number is the number of elements present in a set and we denote this I'm sorry we denote this using small n a equal to 3 because we have three elements 1 2 and 3 so we say n a equals 3 so this is the name of the set we have this will always be the same this means the cardinal number the cardinal number of set a is 3 okay so that's how we we say the cardinal number cardinal number is the count of elements in a set in this set there are three elements so the cardinal number is 3 the next concept is of equivalent sets and now we now we have we have another set let's take another set we have set B which has A, B and C we also have a set C which has 1, 2, 3 4, 5, 6 we have another set which has um, 1, 2, 3. We have another set 
as A B C B E F. Okay. <clears throat> now, what are equivalent sets? What is the condition of of equivalent set? The condition of equivalent set is N A equal to N B. So this is the condition. That means if the number of elements in a given set is equal to the number of elements in another set, that means they are equivalent. If the number of elements in a given set is equal to the number of elements in in another given set, then it is called equivalent sets. So in this case, A and B are equivalent sets because no matter what the elements are, maybe the elements are different and and really that does not matter the elements may be different see in this case it has a b and c but here it has 1 2 and 3 well the elements are different but can you notice both has same number of elements 1 2 3 1 2 3 so these are equivalent sets okay these are equivalent sets but can we say c equivalent to a no we cannot because because let me write <clears throat> the cardinal number of c is 6 and um, the cardinal number of a is 3 thus they are not the same i'm i'm sorry they are not equivalent right in order to be equivalent both must have same number of elements not the same elements now, can I say that D is equivalent to A? Yes, I can. I can say D is equivalent to, say, equivalent to A since it has the same number of elements. We do not check what the elements are. When we are checking, when we are checking if two sets are equivalent, we do not check the elements inside it. We check the number of elements inside it. And since the set D has three number of elements and set A also has three number of elements. Therefore, they both are equivalent sets. So these are equivalent sets. Is A equivalent set? No, it is not because it has six elements. It has only three elements. So these are not equal. Yeah, I'm sorry, equivalent. So in order to be equivalent, this condition must be satisfied. This condition must be satisfied, right? So that's how you can check if a given set is equivalent or not. Let's move on to the next and the last type of set, which is equal sets. What is equal set? Equal set simply means equal set simply means a equals b. That's it. That means <coughs> That means this condition must be satisfied as well as all the elements must match. All the elements must match. If not, then, then if, see, there are two conditions. So this is the first condition and this is the second condition. If this thing matches, then it is equivalent. If this thing also matches, then it is equal. Okay, but if this thing matches and this thing does not matches, it is equivalent but not equal. Remember that. It must be exactly equal. It must be exactly the same thing. That means here I can say A and D are exactly the same thing because D also has 1, 2, 3. A also has 1, 2, 3. That means they both are equal. That's how I can determine if the sets are equal or not. But I cannot say that B that B is equal to A. No. B is equivalent to A, but not equal to A. Remember that. Why? Because B has A, B, C. Right? B has A, B, C, whereas A has 1, 2, 3. 
so they do not match that's why they are not equal that's why they are not equal okay so with this we end the types of set now let's jump on to the next section which is called the set operations so what are set operations set operations are the things we can do with set we can do various things with sets and now we will look on to them each and each and every one in a great detail so let's have a look so for example i have a set first let's understand this with a simple example then i will move on to a you know a complex example a real life scenario where sets are used but before that you must understand a simple example so let's have a set called a oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i need to include another topic here which is universal set i'm extremely sorry for this universal set yeah before going on to set operations this thing is really really important in fact this is one of the most important topic okay okay so universal sets are the set i uh, am uh, you know i'm sorry universal set is the set which contains all the elements in a given context so for example for example we have 10 employees and we will denote this using e we have 10 employees a b c d e e f g h i i a b c d e f g h i j k l a b c d e f g h i j okay another perfect now e has e has all the elements e has all the elements within it right it has all the employees within it in this case so i will remove e and i will put a u u means universal set the set which contains all the elements in a given situation or a given context is called the universal set now if i say p p is the set of employees who use python so let's say a b and c use python and let's have another set called j which includes programmers who use java so we have d i'm sorry b e f b c let's have another example um well let's have you know python some more because i'm teaching python and i'm not taking enough examples so yeah uh, let's have h let's have i let's have j as well as k now um let's say we have r so r means you know r includes the developers who use ruby so we have a b k e that's it now i have another set i have another set which is let's say c c includes the developers who you see as well as c++ so a b c d e g h k right now can you determine any other element than a b c d e f g h i j can you determine can you see any other element other than these no nope, you cannot you cannot b has a b c h i j k which is present inside you which is present inside you right this thing is present inside you 
D E F B C. This is also present inside you. A B K is also present inside you. C A B C D E G H K is also present inside you. So, universal set is that set. Again, universal set is that set which includes or which contains all the elements in a given situation. So in this case, we have 10 employees. So that means the universal sh set should have all the 10 employees because we cannot take anything else other than the employee's name, you know. So we have 10 employees and they all should be inside the universal list. I'm sorry, universal set. <laughs> and remember, all the sets in a given context, all the sets in a given context or a situation is and will be a subset of the universal set. So no matter what you say, no matter what you say, P is a subset of U, J is a subset of U, R is a subset of U, C is a subset of U, and U will always be the superset of all the sets in a given situation. U will always be the superset and rest all of the other set will be subset. Remember that. So that is called universal set, right? And let's keep these examples because we will use these. Now, um, let's start with our next topic, which is union. Our first set operation is union. Let's understand this. So what is union? First of all, let's see how we can write union in uh, mathematical terms. Let's say A, oh, well, let's say J union, let's keep that space, um, P, P, yeah. And we denote union using this symbol a u so this is union right so j union p and what does union mean union means combine all the elements of both of the sets that means combine all the elements inside j with p so inside j we have d e f b c so let's write them one by one Okay, before writing, and P has A, B, C, H, I, J, K. Now let's write all the elements. And remember, no repetition. No repetition. Let's write it here. Equal to D, E, F, B, C. A. B is already present, we won't take B. As you can see, as you can see here, I have taken all the elements of J. Now I will take all the elements of P except those which are already present inside J. Except those which are already present inside J. So A is already present inside J and we have already written that. I'm sorry, not A. Uh, B is already present inside J. So we won't write B. We will take A. Then let's see. Is C present inside um, J? Yeah, it is. And we have already written C. So you have to take any one of the element. Any one of the element. If something is common, take it once. Do not write two times. Or do not exclude it. You have to write it. But only one single time. So do not take C as well. H. H is unique. You haven't taken it yet. I is also unique, J is also unique, K is unique. So J union P gives us D E F B C A H I J K. Right. So we combine both these sets, we combine both these sets and we write all the elements. So I say D E I'm sorry. 
Now where was I? Yeah, E. Then I say F. Then I say B. Then C. Then A. I won't take B because B is already present here. So I move on to C. C is again also present here. So I will take H. I take H and then I take I. I take J. And finally I take K, right? I take K. So that is how I do this. But you know, this becomes complicated sometimes and that's why we take a diagram called the Venn diagram and the Venn diagram looks something like this. This rectangle shape is called the universal set. You know, uh, this one, this one right here, this U thing, this U is this whole thing. It contains all the elements in a given situation. And in this situation, we have A to K, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, H, I, K, K. So we have all the elements present inside this box. Now we take two, you know, we take circles or ellipses to represent sets. So this is a set. Okay, this is a set. And uh, well, yeah. And this is uh, again a set. I'm sorry for my drawing. This is also a set. So let this one be J. Let this one be P. And obviously the outside one is always U. Okay. Now J union P. Let's write the elements. Let's write the elements, right? So Inside J, we have D, E, F. Okay, not not D, E, F. Okay. Um. Yeah. D, E, F. Okay. In this portion, write B, C, and I will shortly tell you why I have written this here. In this portion, write A. H I J K right so now I take J union P that means I combine all of these so in here J has D E F which is unique P has A H I J K which is unique but both of them has a common thing called B and C right and we take the whole thing the whole thing over here right since we take the whole thing we write the common portion only once only once no repetition is allowed okay so we write the common you know the common elements only once but we take the whole we take d e f b c a h i j k you can verify this with this you can verify this okay that is called union. That is called union. We take unique elements as well as common elements. Okay. So that was the first thing. And yeah, let's keep this. Let's keep this. Now, this was union. The next set operation is intersection. So what is intersection? Intersection is nothing but the common portion between two sets. In this case, let us first identify what are the common elements between J. I'm sorry. Let me take this one. Yeah. Between J and P. 
what are the common elements so we can clearly see that j has b and p also has b j has c and p again has c so that means b and c are the common elements and that's what we get when we intersection on both the sets so we can write this as j p and uh, intersection is represented using the reverse or you can say upside down u so this is the intersection so upside down u is intersection and the normal one you know the normal u is the union now again we take text equals b c so the common portion is b and c and that's when we say j intersection p is b and c and using the diagram you can clearly see that the common section that is a section which exists in both j and p that means the the elements which exist on both sides this one as well as this one so what are the elements it's b and c because you can clearly see that you know there is an intersection right there is an intersection and that's why this is the common part this i like structure forms the common portion between j and p okay so that is the that is the intersection and i hope intersection is uh, you know simple just take out the common parts of both the sets and you have the intersection no.